Have you been wondering how to transition your choice boards and checklist from the traditional classroom to online learning? Stay tuned and I'm going to show you how to quickly make a checklist using Google Sheets. Okay, so I pulled up Google and I went into my waffle over here is what my kids call it in school. And if you click on this, it'll bring up your choices and you can click on sheet. So that is how I got to this page. Now, your screen may look a little different. Mine is set up this way. Um, so I'm going to click on the to-do list template that they offer. And it's going to bring up a very basic page where you can change all of this text in here. They give you 50 boxes to fill in. Um, but obviously for center time, I wouldn't have 50 tasks for kids to complete. So here's an example of one that I made. It was for vocabulary centers. So as you can see, you can change the color of the boxes. You can change the text and the font. You can change the size. I added borders here so that it's a little more clear what students should be reading. So let's make some of these changes together. So in your template, the first thing that I did was um, change how many boxes are offered here. So I decided to just go with eight. So I'm going to highlight all of this and I'm going to click delete rows because I don't need that many rows. Now I'm left with five rows of things that kids could do for centers. So if you are using this for a week, could do one center a day and you could put the date that they should be working on that center here. So for example, I could uncheck this. This is a great feature. When you check it, it strikes out the whole thing so kids know it's complete. So I could change the date here. Let's say I want kids to do this center um, by May 1st, 2020. And I'm going to change this to their task is to create a crossword puzzle, okay? So now they know that by May 1st, they need to have created a crossword puzzle with their vocabulary. And you can do that for each of these. When you add text, it's going to add to the number of assignments they should complete. So here I'm going to add, um, write a story with each word, okay? And it's going to change this to four tasks, zero out of four tasks completed. You can click on this and change the title. So I want my title to be, for this, I want it to be vocabulary centers. You could do math centers, or you could just call this uh, center time. If you teach all subjects, and then I'm going to expand this so that the text is straight across. Okay. And then you can change the color here by highlighting, coming to the bucket. You have all these wonderful color options. I'm going to choose blue. Now the text is white, so I want to change that as well. I'm going to click on the A, and I'm going to choose just a simple black text that will show up. Here you have um, the number two row. I can come in and I can add directions. So I can type out what I want my students to do. I could put the due date here. So let's say this is due by May uh, 11th, 2020. Now they have, um, they'll have directions here, complete each center. I can change the font size if I don't want it to be quite that big. Right, so now they have directions. They know they should complete each center. And then their due date is right here. Oh, that R got left out too. You can also change the title here. So maybe I don't want this to be the date on mine. 
I titled it The Center. So in my classroom, if we're working on vocabulary, students would have a specific thing to do in this vocabulary center. So they might be doing a crossword. They might be doing a Freyer model. Um, so I put the title of the task here and then the direction. So I could even change this text to say task and then change this text to say directions. So it's clear this is what they should be working on and this is the directions that go with that task. You can um, expand this. You can. I like to change each row here into a different color. I think it makes it a little easier for students to see. Um, and then, like I said, when they're finished, they click the box and it scratches the whole thing out for them. So maybe in directions, if you want to differentiate your centers, here you could, you could put complete, instead of each center, you could put complete two out of four, out of four centers. Okay, so if you have a student who um, has a limited number of tasks that they have to do, this is a great way to easily differentiate for your kids. Once you've completed this, you can go into the Google Classroom if your district uses that and you can assign this checklist to each student. And that way it'll make a copy for each person so when they are checking off what they've completed, it will not interfere with anybody else's, but you will have access to what they've done. The other thing I like about this is I can copy down here if I right click, I can duplicate this checklist. So now I have a copy of it. So let's say this one was um, week one of alternative learning. I could then change this to week two. And now we have all of our weeks in one place for each child. Okay. So I'm gonna share a link to this um, checklist for vocabulary centers if you would like to use it. The link will be listed down below. Just make sure that when you access it, you come up here and make a copy so that other people are not uh, messing up what's already here. If you um, want more information about Google, Google Classroom, differentiation, choice, choice boards, or a checklist, leave a comment down below. I'd be glad to make some more videos. Uh, follow me on Instagram at inspireteachgrow, and I'll see you later. Thanks for watching.